Hi. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you've joined today. I was just having a little coughing fit right before I went on, so hopefully that won't continue. I am, as I said, thrilled that you're here, and sorry I was a couple of hours later than I thought I'd be today, but it took me a lot longer to pick things up that I had out, scattered out that I'd worked on Christmas cards and projects and all that. I don't know if any of you have done that <laughs> and had to do a major overhaul and clean up and put up and all that. So I haven't finished that, but I finished it in the area that you could see on the video. <laughs> so hopefully I can give you some new information today, some new tips, techniques. I'm going to show you this new suite. I, I think I did the video two weeks ago, maybe on it, on the nature sweetness. So I am glad you're here. This is what we're going to concentrate on today. And then some other items out of our wonderful mini catalog. Yay! It just started January through April. So if you don't have one and you are and you don't have a demonstrator, I'm happy to get you one. Just let me know. And please let me know that you're here. Hello, Tanya. Glad you've joined. And thanks everybody else for tuning in, uh, whether you're watching live on YouTube or live on Facebook or you're watching a replay. I'm glad that you're here. And I do sell all the products that I'll be featuring today on this video. So as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I really appreciate your business. I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you letting me share my creativity with you and hopefully inspire you to make some projects of your own. Or come to some of my classes here in Lubbock if you're in the area. Would love to have you. Hello, Facebook user. I can, I'm glad you're here too. Uh, thanks for the tip or the reminder that I need to show you all the little message that this is how you show up on my screen if you're tuned in on Facebook. And the way to fix that is to go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook and give StreamYard permission to show your name and all that. So that's the way that goes. If you tune in, this way I'll know who you are. And if you'll let me know where you're from, that's awesome too. Hello, Francie. I'm glad you're here. That's uh, Rebecca's mom, for those of you in the Lubbock area who get to come to some of my Create with Kelly crew classes. Francie is her mom, so we're glad to have her tuning in. And we will go ahead and get started. Y'all let me know. What do you want to see first? Some samples out of the mini catalog? Or do you want to make this card first? Y'all let me know. Whoever's up, <laughs> let me know what you think. And I will get after it. Today on this card, as I said, we're going to be featuring the notes of na the, excuse me, nature sweetness sweet. And that includes the lovely and sweet stamp set and die set or bundle. It also includes the Notes of Nature stamp set and die set or bundle. So I haven't heard any answers back yet. So about which one y'all want to see first, if you want to see me make the card or see the samples that I have. I was participated in a swap with a group kind of in, in my demonstrator group in the area, kind of my upline, if y'all are familiar with a direct marketing company where we have somebody who recruits us into the Stampin' Up! community and family, and usually we stay here a long time, and we stay in touch and share ideas, and in this instance, we share a swap. So, Tanya wants to see samples first, so that's what we'll do real quickly, and then we'll, okay, Francie agrees. She wants to do, see samples and a card, so we're going to go with what y'all say, and then I'll... We'll do that and then get to the card. Okay. Yay. If you, any of you, like I said, let me get this photo fixed here. Change the screen up. Switch that around. There we go. Now, y'all can see better. Hopefully. That's still kind of close. That's very close. Hmm. Looks like my little Archon stand may have moved. So, excuse me and let me see if I can move it up so y'all can see more of the catalog here as we go. I like to have it a little closer when I'm doing a card. Okay. Now, 
as I said, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the Lubbock, Texas area, Kelly Pitts, and I have a blog at createwithkelly.com. Would love for you to subscribe there and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Create with Kelly Pitts. And I have a Facebook page, Create with Kelly. So, and a group called Create with Kelly Crew. <laughs> love to have you participate in any of those. But if you need a catalog, let me know. And I'm just going to kind of go through real quickly and show you. This is one of the suites, the Be Mine suite that's on page nine. I still don't have this very straight. Sorry, peeps. <clears throat> But let's see, let me get a piece of white paper here. So you've seen the suite. Now I want to show you the samples that I have. This one came in from Cheryl Bivens and she is in Edmond, Oklahoma. She's a fellow demonstrator. Isn't that cute? And this folds back, I'm assuming. We'll just open that real quickly. I, sorry, I didn't open these before, should have. Okay, and this is the deckled circle die that carried over from one of the minis or online exclusives or something, but it is still current. The deckled circles, that's an awesome set to use. Isn't that cute? You make my heart buzz. Be mine. So cute little Valentine or otherwise card. That could be kind of any time. It seems Valentine-ish a little bit with the hearts, but... Okay, we're going to make just a stack here and hopefully get those back in the right order. Here's another Be Mine card, and this one does not look like a fun fold, so I won't get that open for you, but you can see this cute little card with a DSP from Be Mine, and this is from Pam Gardner, a fellow demonstrator. And now we'll move on to another suite. I'm just, I'm just going to the suites where I have sample for you. Okay, we've got some, and Diane Harlan that's on our, my team or our team showed us some beautiful samples that she had done the other day, but I do not have those with me. I should have thought about that, but this is the Perennial Lavender Suite on page 23, starting on page 23, and I have three samples for this one. Let me get another piece of white paper. Maybe this helps, and then we'll get back to the catalog. So all of these use the designer series paper from the Perennial Lavender Suite. And it has the beautiful, beautiful embellishments that are kind of in the purpley, a little bit, not really mauve but light purple, dark purple, gorgeous grape, Highland Heather, uh, Berry Burst, all of those kind of fun colors. And then it also uses our postage stamp dies that come in all different sizes, lots of shape, lots of sizes they all have that little edge like that like a postage stamp and this is a fun fold that opens up we can open that really quickly for you this one is from tammy dale she is in prosper texas and i'll show you how that opens up isn't that pretty with that dsp lovely lovely okay and then this one looks like it opens like a regular card front it just uses the stamps from that set and some of the DSP. And this is from Socorro Gonzalez Bray. And this one has is brings out the green colors as well as the purples. Isn't that pretty? Here for you always. And this one is from Suzanne Taylor. And it doesn't say what her town is. I can't remember that. Sue Sue's Sisterhood. Isn't that pretty? Okay, that's the perennial lavender suite. Then we're going to move on to the next one that I have samples of. And that would be, this is a new kind of concept. We've had a, a couple of them, but it's still fairly new, where we have various products that work together that you can use separately or you can use them together to make a card like this one. And this one has our masks that are called decorative masks, enduring beauty decorative masks. And that is what is on page, let's see, page 38. And it has the different masks that you, you um, line them up. There's a little notch at the top and you line up the little mask and do one at a time and put your color on. And like you'll put it onto the regular onto a piece of paper and then die cut it or die cut it and then put the mask on. It's probably easier to do that. I don't have this set yet, so 
I don't know exactly how it works, but that's those all line up for you to be able to color in the floral area, the flowers and the leaves separately like that. Isn't that pretty? And then the big die cuts it all out separately. And then there are some little leaves that go with that. So that is called Enduring Beauty stamp set. Yay. And then we have the next one is the nature's sweetness and that's what i'm featuring today in the card that we'll make in a few minutes and this one this is the swap that i did for this little group and i put the instructions here and anybody who comments if you today if you want to be entered in the drawing to win one of these cards i will be glad to do a little drawing and send that to you i'll do one at the end of the month and have the comments and shares. You get two entries for shares and one entry for a comment, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook or anywhere. I'd love for you to share it on your social media. And that increases your chances of getting one of these cards. How about that? We are also going to be doing one in our techniques class that's coming up here in Lubbock. We'll be doing one like this. So I'm excited to share that with folks. But this is called a backfold card. It opens like that. And it has the beautiful designer series paper, one of the sheets that has the combo pebbled path and pecan pie. Who would have ever put those together? I would not have, but I have fallen in love with this after all the bright stuff that I've been working with. So this collage technique is what we're going to be featuring a lot of on my techniques class this, this coming Sunday, the 14th. So. There's the little flowers that are from that set, but that's how that works as a backfold card. And like I said, that was mine. Then we have a sample that it has the gold foil. This is another sheet of the DSP that is in that Nature's Sweetness. So it's called Nature's Sweetness DSP. And this one has a gold foil and the die cut cuts that out. And then you can color it with... I, I assume they use Stampin' Blends. It looks kind of like blends to me. And then they use some of the designer series paper in the background and kind of wadded it up, textured it a little bit. Isn't that pretty? And then use some of the leather trim that is part of that suite and some other embellishments that are from a different suite. Cute, cute. And this one is from Linda Tolson Yarborough. And she is in Aubrey, Texas. So I think that's really pretty. Then this one is kind of a combination from the this catalog and the birds and this designer series paper and the butterfly are from the celebration catalog that is good from January and February of this year. So that's a new, new celebration catalog. Let's see if I have one of those handy so I can show you the front. I will also get you one of these if you do not have a demonstrator already and need a catalog. I'm happy to do that. Let, just let me know. But this, you can see, uses the field notes and some of the texture stamps that are from the Nature's Sweetness Suite. So it's kind of a combo. All right. Got that one. Isn't that pretty? I told you. Oh, Jan McCollum. And she is in Georgetown, Colorado. Or Colorado. Whichever way you say it. <laughs> Then we also have this pretty card from, this is on page 51, and this is a bundle in the new mini catalog. <clears throat> Let me move that over since it's not a two-page spread, just a one-page spread. This one is from Amy Story in Denton, Texas, and it has the cute embossing folder, the teardrops, teardrops, <laughs> raindrops embossing folder could be either one, and the cloud dies that coordinate with this set that are, or that are part of this set, I guess. So, isn't that pretty? Brighter skies are on their way. So, we hope so for you, Amy. We hope that is coming up quickly here. Have some brighter skies. All right, cute card. Now we have, this is kind of another combo between Celebration and the mini catalog. And this one has the, the stamp and the, the tools here and the dad are from this set, Trusty Tools Bundle. 
and that has like I said the stamp set and the die set and then celebration has a paper that has all kinds of these tools that you can cut out from the paper or use that are really really cute and then she's also combined that with a texture folder that's one of the 3d embossing basics folders that's in the they're an online exclusive all right then we have a sample of poetic expressions this is one of the new suites and it has the hummingbird and then this is also a combo the designer series paper I believe is a celebration paper. Hold on, let me make sure. Yeah, it must be. And it's called, let's see, because it's not the trusty tools. It's not the same name. Softly stippled is what that paper is in the celebration catalog. It's so great. We finally get to open up the catalogs and show you on air. <laughs> that sure makes it easier for us when we can do that. And for y'all too, I'm sure. And this has the Twisted Rope 3D embossing folder in the background. Hopefully y'all can see that. I need to move my white paper down. But it has the hummingbird. It looks like she's done some sponge dauber or blending brushes to do the hummingbird. And then she has that pecan pie. Is that pecan pie? Oh, I can't remember the, the name of that trim. I think it is. It just looks a lot browner compared to this. This is copper clay, I think. But that's a pretty one, too. Stardust stamper Cheryl Bennett. And she is in Plentywood, Montana. So she's, she's a fur piece, as they say. And that looks like those gems with the pretty peacock. And then, well, I'm not sure what those embellishments are called. Hard to remember all of these things in when we get all this new stuff. Then we have another pretty card from Leslie Bumgarner. And she is in the Dallas area also. Praying for his comfort to soften the sadness and bring you peace. So it's a very nice sympathy card that also uses the grid and the splatter from the Nature Sweetness stamp set, sweet stamp set. And it is, and then it combines with this distinctive stamp set on page 63 called Quiet Reflection. So this is a pretty sympathy set. If y'all don't have a really pretty one, this, this really is a nice one that can com combine with a lot of different designer series papers or uh, background texture folders, all of that. This would be pretty with those. All right. So that is all the samples I have for you today. But I just was excited to show those to you since the catalog went live. And now we'll get after it and I will set these aside. And as please let me know if you need one of those catalogs. I am happy to send you one if you don't already have a demonstrator. Or I can put one on the porch for you to pick up if that works better for you. If you don't want me to deliver it. If you're in the area, you can pick it up quickly. In fact, they're already in my porch box. So y'all help yourselves if you if you need one of those. Okay, we're going to get started here. Thanks for being patient with me today as I, it just took a lot longer to clear everything off. And then it takes a while. I don't know if y'all have ever done anything like this on a video, but to get the card done and then photographed and watermarked and then pulled into a program and then get the supply list done and all that. It just, it takes some, a lot on the back end to prep for a video like this. And I'll try to have as much information as I can for y'all. This is, this card was, I, I did it and put it on my blog, the create with Kelly.com. This was, I was able to, participate in Kylie Bertucci's winner's hop. I had enough votes to be in the top 10 and she is in Australia. So that was exciting to me to get to be in the top 10 of her group in the international blog hop. So if y'all want to see written instructions on that, I do have that on my blog, <clears throat> but I'll try to give you the, the basics today. We've got a four and a quarter by 11 piece of pebble path cardstock scored at five and a half and also scored at four and a quarter so when you're scoring it just if you score it this way say 
you'll do four and a quarter and then five and a half. And then it's going to fold back this way and just make sure it gets lined up properly on the sides there. And then I like to really, really score it well from both sides. Every side you can score the score, then do it. <laughs> okay. And I don't know why I've got, it looks like another score there. I don't know what that's about. Today, my brain has really been off. So y'all have to bear with me. <laughs> okay. We also have a piece of pecan pie. And this is four and one eighth squared, four and an eighth by four and an eighth. And we're going to just glue that on. And you can use your liquid glue or seal, whatever works for you, whatever your favorite is. And I have just die cut a circle out of that because I am frugal with my cardstock. And the only part that shows is a teeny tiny edge, which makes a big difference when we're adding the, the uh, Pebble Path cardstock to the Pebble Path or vice versa, actually, Pebble Path designer series paper. See that? So it's just a little bitty border, but it really pops with, with the color that we're going to do on the cacao plant and the cork. I think it's really pretty. And always remember when you're using any kind of foil paper, you want to use a stamp and seal is going to be a lot better for your, well, it won't show through. Like sometimes liquid glue can really show. <clears throat> if you make little squiggle lines, they show through. So, and you don't have that trouble with seal. So, but you don't have any kind of, movement or wiggle room or anything with the seal unless you jump on it really quickly and do it exactly right so i only use it when i need to but this is one of the times i need to okay just making sure all that's even and flat and lovely lovely this is the tartan plaid foil paper that comes in i believe it is what is that color it's not soft succulent we don't have that anymore right it's copper there's copper clay and pebble path and what is that green color greenish blue color do y'all anybody is this the dsp that you're talking about facebook user are you rebecca i'm assuming I'm not sure but that is that tartan tartan plaid foil paper that's so pretty and then i've got a gold foil that I have cut out with the stylus shapes dies. Okay, I thought so, Rebecca. That is a pretty one. Do y'all, Tanya or Rebecca, one, do y'all know that, which color that is? Is it Lost Lagoon? I'm kind of thinking it's Lost Lagoon that is the other, the third color in those, in that set that's online exclusives paper. Okay, we have the foil. And I did, all I did was cut out a stylus shape again, and I'm going to use this on something else. So I just wanted to let you know that it's, it's good to be frugal. Let me get that off. Okay, Tanya, thanks. I thought so. I don't have that Lost Lagoon in here with me, but since we're not using it today, but it is gorgeous color. I, I just went blank for a minute. Okay, we are going to go ahead and pop this up. And I'm going to put this kind of at the bottom. And I kind of have a grain on this foil. There, the gold foil that we have still in the catalog is just a plain gold foil. I think this one might be a brush. So it's a little bit different gold. But it doesn't really matter. Whatever kind of gold foil you have that you want to use, I would just recommend using the same one for the die that we're going to put over here and this die. So they match. It doesn't really matter which goal they are, but just make sure they coordinate well. And I think for the card, I, I'm trying to find, let's see if we can see that better. <clears throat> trying to get a spot on here that is not going to be directly underneath here. I don't really want 
a dimensional here and then a dimensional on the little cacao plant too where it's double stacked. So I'm trying to put it in a different area. So it would probably be easier to do that after I got it and kind of auditioned my pieces after I stamped it and all. But I'm just going to go ahead and put this in kind of in the center where I think it's going to go, centering that. And I may add another one after I get all that other stuff on, but just for positioning, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And on this piece of gold foil, this is cut out with the die from that I just love. I think this is actually the one that sold me on this set was this leaf die. Is that not beautiful? And it is gorgeous in every color I have cut it out in. It's just gorgeous. We're going to be doing a lot with that this month. We're, I'm going to be spotlighting this suite in my classes this month. Just realized I'm just getting glue everywhere. Over here, my glue is dripping. So I need to get that off just a sec here. Hopefully I have my, yeah, my wipes. I had them covered up. Hang on a sec here. Sorry, this is loud, but I need to get this off my fingers and off of my tabletop. Whoops. <laughs> shake, shake, shake. Sorry about that. Okay, so I would just be careful with this. You don't have to have every little bit of it down. We're just going to put liquid glue. You could use adhesive sheets when you're doing this, but I'm just doing it this way. More on the solid areas and not in the little kind of striped, striped or striated or however you want to call it <laughs> areas. And this will just kind of fit. You can go, you don't want to go over the fold really. And you don't really want to go over the edge. So just kind of get it in there and then we're going to snip it, snip it in the bud. Hopefully, here we go. Found my, found my snips. And I usually trim from the back, just a little tip. That's usually works better. Okay, so this is a book binding fold. We'll finish that up shortly. And usually when you put ribbon through here, you want to go ahead and do that before you glue it together. But we're just going to go ahead and glue it because we don't have any ribbon. I think I must have watered down this glue. That's why it's a little leaky. We're going to get one more wet wipe out just so I have it handy. Okay, so we're set with that. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab just a little bit of this gorgeous. It is so pretty. This is part of the sweet, and I would recommend that. That's kind of an easy button for sweets, <laughs> where it comes with both of the bundles that I've shown you and the cork adhesive rounds, and then this gold trim that's just beautiful. This number by itself is 162644. But you can you can use it for just to put a line on your cardstock, just to define a line between a top and a bottom, or a, you can add it underneath something and make a little squiggle. I mean, there are just a lot of things you can do with it. But I I wanted to try this, and it seemed to work. So I thought it was really pretty to just put it right down the center here. I just lined up the a little bit of glue all the way. Then we're going to take, make sure we're on camera here for you. And I am just laying this over the top of that leaf pattern, kind of like it is the, the stem that all those branches come off of. Isn't that cool? I love that. It's, it feels like leather. I mean, it, it is like a, a leather trim that has gold in it. It is just gorgeous. And it is soft. 
it's kind of big for you to do a knot, a bow or a knot in, but you saw one on one of those sample cards. So I guess it works better than I originally thought it would for that. <clears throat> okay, let's see. What else can we do? We can go ahead and get this on. We'll stamp this. We're about to start our little stamping routine here. Yay, that's what we're about, right? Stamping. Okay, find my little stamping pad. I have more stuff in this room, even though that could be a problem that I cleared out so that y'all didn't have to look at it all. <laughs> okay. And I've already die cut. I think this is a really pretty die cut, too. And this one is going to be stamped in pecan pie. We have pecan pie and pebble path that we're focusing on today. And I'm just going to use the stamp that comes in one of those sets. Just sending a bit of love your way. Isn't that sweet? You could use that for just about anything. Just double check the die and make sure which side is up because there's an obvious, obvious side to it. And even though these are not photopolymer stamps, you can still tell even if you do the die cut first. But if you're more comfortable stamping first and then die cutting, you can do that. Whatever, whatever makes you happy. All right. Then we're going to... Set that aside. I'm going to go ahead and stamp. Get my, oh, my cleaner is almost out of reach there. Whoops, wrong one. That's a dry one. It does dry out. Your little stamping chamois dries out if you don't. If you're gone over Christmas and New Year's or whatever, and you're not stamping as much as usual, Sometimes it can dry out on you, but it comes right back. So just wet it under the faucet and get it good and soaked and squeeze it and you're good to go. All righty. We're going to stamp. Uh, well, I've already stamped one of these. In fact, I've already done two. So I'm just going to use one of those for that. But I'll show you on the inside what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little bit of this kind of a, just at the top. And I'm going to line it up so that we can see the little... Eh, I wish I had a little more of that leaf. I think I'm going to flip that over. Try it again. I'm going to go a little bit more. I'm going off the edge intentionally. And then at the bottom, I'm just going to use the leafy part, kind of leaf and branch. Isn't that cool? Kind of give you a little, a very field notes, nature kind of thing. Could be very masculine if you want it to be. And that's what we're going to use on the inside. And I'm using, I used Pebble Path for that. And I'm going to show you how. There are a lot of ways you can color these, or you can leave them just like they are. They don't have to be colored. But we're going to play a little bit with watercolor pencils. And we're going to, I'm going to go ahead. I don't know if it's a smart thing. It seems easier to go ahead and watercolor it. But then if your dye slips, then you've done all that work for nothing. So <laughs> which way would y'all do it? Would y'all do the cut out the dye first and then color it? Or would you color it first? Just curious to see what y'all would do. I think I'm going to go ahead. I think I'm going to risk it. I've got two of them here. So we are going to go ahead. We're going to play with the watercolor pencils and blender pens. Have y'all used our blender pen? You get three of these in a pack. And I don't have a number here, but they are great to use. You can use the watercolor pencils can be used like with a water painter or with a blender pen. They're, they kind of give you two different effects. So, <clears throat> excuse me. 
we're going to use part there's there's a assortment one and assortment two this is the old assortment one so but the colors that i'm using are still current the watercolor pencils just last for years and years and years <laughs> And you don't want to sharp, keep sharpening them all the time. You want them kind of a little bit dull, really, for the best effect. So, okay, we're going to use our old olive kind of as a base. And you don't have to be really particular. I'm. This is just an easy way to color the whole area in here. And then I'm going to use a little bit of different greens. I've got old olive and granny apple and garden green that I can use. And what I did when I did this initial card was I just, I looked it up. I looked up the cacao plant and this set has the lovely and sweet set has a vanilla almond these are almonds i didn't even see that i thought it was a floral bundle i thought it was all flowers but it actually has almonds in there and this is the cacao plant that you make cocoa out of so cocoa vanilla and almond isn't that cool just a little tidbit for you okay so this is nothing wonderful here but we're just going to get it colored kind of a base color and then we'll switch it up a little bit when we add the other colors. This is the inside. I'm just going to kind of do it all at once. And I kind of, you can use the cardboard, you can use a table. It's kind of whatever works best for you, whatever your work surface is. You definitely, if you have like a plasticky table that's got the pebbled, you know, the rough texture top, you probably want to use something over that otherwise it might show through when you're doing it this way all right we're just going to put a little bit of green here and there we've got olive going i'm going to put a little bit of green in that stem and then we're going to come back with a little bit of brown but i looked up the cacao plant on i googled it and then i tried in my head to figure out what colors that would be that would work with that. I, I thought it needed to be a little bit brighter than the olive, but really this one came out too bright. I thought that was more garden green and granny apple green. So I used olive as a base first on this one so it won't be quite as bright. And I'm just going to go ahead and go over all these areas and you'll see how much difference it makes when we use the blender pen. Sorry, I don't understand. Whoops, I guess I hit my watch there. <laughs> it's talking to me. So I hope y'all are having a great weekend. I have had a busy one, it seems. Okay, now we're going to take our blender pen. Get this where you can see everything I'm doing here. We'll let that go off the screen a little bit. So make sure y'all have plenty of room here to see hopefully it's close enough and I am just blending kind of those colors together then I'm going to come back and you think it's not going to matter because we're going to cut it out die cut it out if you go outside the lines but it will show a little bit because the die cut is a little bit larger so it'll show a little bit of white space so you do want to kind of color in the lines. If you can, it's not a big deal if you get out a little bit. I-M-O. All right. So I'm just kind of not doing any special blending or anything fancy. Now I'm just going to go in on some of those lines that the Stampin' Up! designer drew in there kind of going in with garden green on this one that's a little little brighter we'll see how we like it and you can make each leaf different you could make i would make the inside coordinate with the outside but the leaves i would have them basically the same 
colors using the same colors, but they don't all have to look exactly the same. So we're going to make it a little bit darker there toward the stem. Now we're going to see how we like this when we blend that out. See, now it's not such a stark contrast, but it's not totally flat. It gives it a little bit of personality. And we'll say, let's make this one a little bit darker toward this end here, or brighter. And maybe this would be bright. That's kind of a turned up part of the leaf. So let's do that a little brighter. Do that center stem. And if y'all are more comfortable finishing one and then going to the next, you do it however it makes you happy. I just feel like it's easier to take a color and work with it and then do the same color on the inside and the outside at the same time. Okay, now we're just going to kind of clean that off a little bit. How do, Can you see the color variation there? It has a little bit of old olive, a little bit of granny apple green, and a little bit of, what was it? Garden green. Okay. Now, we'll take our, what is this? Oh, nope. I want the early espresso is another one of the colors. And I'm just going to kind of do the branch and the bottom of that stem, a little bit of those with the the brownish color, early espresso, and not doing it really dark, not really doing it heavily for the stem to kind of keep it lighter. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to lightly, I'm not using much pressure at all on this watercolor pencil. I'm just kind of getting some color on here because it totally looks different when you get, get the blender pen after it. Or if you were to do the aqua painter. I just like being able to use the watercolor pencils and the blender pens. And that way I can stick with the same. I can stamp with the pebbled path. Instead of having to go with a stays on or memento or whatever. Like you might have to change it up if you're using blends or <clears throat> doing something different like that. So. You can see how much difference that makes. See, I'm, I'm making this lighter and come out on top of this because I'm putting the dark. Once you put dark here on this little cacao bean, it pokes this one up. Does that make sense? Pushes that one up a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and lay down the color on this one and you can play with these you can layer it you can go on with the blender pen and then come back with more of the watercolor you can do whatever you want it's kind of therapeutic to me this is fun to do some little adult coloring always enjoyed that as a kid okay i'm going to make these little ends a little darker <gasps> whoop Kind of went out of the lines there. I don't know that I have a, a decent eraser. Probably not. Ha <laughs> Nah. You'd have to have a different kind of eraser. And I don't have that here. But okay. Now, when I was looking this up online, like I said, when I Googled it, the cacao plant, it had a lot of the stages of it. It has different colors at different stages. I mean, way different colors at different stages. So it had a little bit of kind of reddish orange. So I'm using Cajun Craze in addition to that early espresso. And I'm leaving it pretty light, almost leaving almost white here at the, at the very middle. But I want some red in there. We're going to lay this down over here too. We're kind of doing quite a bit of coloring. So hope you all bear with me. But I didn't, I hated to do two different videos. If y'all were ready to see samples, I was ready to show them. So, <laughs> hope you enjoyed that. Okay, now we're going to use our blender pen. And you don't want to leave these uncapped forever because 
they will dry out. They have glycerin, and I'm not sure exactly what else is in here. And I'm kind of now that I'm doing more of the final touches, I'm following the lines that the Stampin' Up! artist put in there because these, the beans are kind of have, these are like different layers or I don't know what you, what you would call it, <laughs> but okay. So I'm going to get that like that. Now I'm going in for the detail. I'm trying to follow those lines so that the strokes are the same. It's harder to do it on the outside there without getting outside the lines, but you can kind of see what I mean, hopefully. With that, get a little more Cajun craze in there. And I could probably use a little sharp. Oops, this is early espresso. All right, so I want this one in the back darker than that one on the front. I'm going to get a little more red in here. I'm calling it red. It has a reddish tint to it with the Cajun craze. But if you want to look at a picture of a real one, that's a good way to do it. If you don't, if you just want, if you wanted to make purple cocoa beans, I suppose you could. Or cacao. They're actually called cacao beans. I don't know how we ever got cocoa out of cacao, but that's what we did. Over here in the U.S. of A. anyway, I don't know where else they call it. Call it that. I'm going to try to use more of that blender pen. See how that lightened it up? It's kind of like our color lifter on when you're using Stampin' Blends. And this is totally different than the Stampin' Blends markers, okay? This is a blender pen. And these don't have any color, and you can use them on any color, and you just wipe them off when you're done with each color. So this is going to be kind of artsy and a little bit out of the lines here, but I think that's okay. Okay, so we're going to call that good for today. And you just wipe off this. You might want to use just scratch paper or we're going to, we're going to die cut that. So we'll use that little edge to get that until it comes out clear. And then you just make sure you cap it and you should store them horizontally like this. Don't store them up and down like that. Store it flat. And then I believe that's all we need to do with that. And we will dock cut that really quickly and get this card assembled. How fun is that? Yay. All right. Grab our sm small little machine here. Oops, sorry. Can't really avoid shaking the table when your when your light is attached to the table that you're <laughs> doing that with. It makes it harder. Okay, what do we need here? One, two. We might need two of these. We shall see how this works. See if I've got that about right. I think. Okay, let me get my die. Ah! Threw them on the floor accidentally. Okay, and I've got a little post-it tape on here already from the last time I used this die. So let's see if I can get this lined up and still be, not have my head totally in the camera or anything. Let's see how our tape is going to hold up. If that will work for us or not. I've, it's been on there for a week or two, so we shall see. Oop. Oop. <laughs> Yikes, that is 
height. Might should have gone down a plate size. Sometimes if it's too tight like that, you could go down to a smaller plate than the one if that works for you. Okay, so that's it. We're just going to leave that like that right now. And then if you want to, when you stamp the cacao, it it stamps that part, but then it doesn't die cut it out. So if you want that kind of field notes look to it, if you're especially if you're giving it to a, a guy or a lady interested in botany, I guess it is, right? Wouldn't that botany? If they're a plant plant person or nature person or even a chocolate person or a coffee person or whatever with the cacao I guess okay and then we're going to add some wink of Stella to that and I do have one little tiny bit there that we need to poke out I don't see my take a pick tool at the moment so we're just going to poke it out with that and we will be finishing this up. Okay, we'll get our inside in. And since this is cardstock, if you want to use liquid glue, you can. You just really, really definitely want to use the seal on foil papers. But the rest of the time, it's your choice. If that's what you like all the time, then use it all the time. Okay, so now this is four inches square for the basic white cardstock. I don't see the stock basic white card. I don't know why my watch keeps talking to me <laughs> or Siri on my watch. Good grief. Okay, so there's that one versus if you wanted to have it, if you didn't want to color the inside, I think that would be okay too. If it just had this on the outside colored and then that on the inside. Or you could do the whole thing not colored if you didn't have time. Cool. You've got options. Alrighty. We're just going to grab our Stampin' Dimensionals. And let me see where that is. So this one, I think I left room for that there. This needs to be up here. Okay. Let's see if I can have one up here. How I'm going to do that. You want to kind of audition your pieces first and see exactly how you're going to put these on. And I'm not taking the back off yet until I figure out right where I want, want to have that. I think I kind of like that like that. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this one. I don't think I have anything double stacked at the moment. Oh, yes, Rebecca. I'm glad that helped you. Yes, that definitely is. The blender pens are great. Yeah, you just have to, I, I don't use them often either. So I'm glad, I'm glad it helped you to know about the storing them flat and all that. And yes, we are about to get after the Wink of Stella. So don't let me forget, Rebecca, <laughs> to do that after I get this done. We want to add that Wink of Stella. Okay, how do we want that? I think we kind of want it over there. I like for the focal point to, <clears throat> and I try not to stick my dimensionals down all the way, just kind of lay them there till I'm sure that's where I want it. I think we want one more right in there. And I probably... Yeah, I want one down here. Didn't get quite as far down as I wanted, but it works. Nope, nope, nope. What? Hey, give me a break here. Okay. It's kind of touching before I want it to. You could tuck this under, that, like that. You could have this on top. You just need to decide what look you want and what position you want and go for it. Fun! 
Okay, we're going to do Wink of Stella, and we're going to do our little embellishments. And hopefully I can, oh, there's my Take Your Pick tool. It was just opposite what I thought. And if you'll keep the cap on your Take Your Pick tool, the putty won't <laughs> dry out like this one does. It gets a big bunch of it. And you don't have to pull that off and throw it away. You're just throwing away money. It still will do its purpose, which is to be sticky enough to help you hold something and get it to where you want it to go. And I love these. I'm usually a very asymmetrical person, but I kind of like the look of that with the little cork adhesives in the corners. Do y'all like that? Or do you want me to try a random one? What do you think? Gonna have to decide quickly. If you want to see a random, you want to see a random? We'll try a random. And you want one close to where the greeting is. Or even you could put it on the greeting. Let's see here. Let me see what I'm doing. If I want a small one, do I want a small one here? Here. You could put one there and one there. And then maybe one at the top. I usually put the larger ones toward the bottom. Because to me that... If they're larger, they seem heavier. So that's kind of how I decide how to sprinkle mine if I'm going to sprinkle them. <laughs> nope. I end up doing kind of an equilateral triangle a lot, and I know that it's not typical to do that, but that's kind of how mine end up a lot of times. Nope. Nope. I'm just going to try that with it all on there in one area because you want to you want to be all about the focal point but I, I think that kind of leaves this a little lonely what do y'all think versus this one which one do you like <laughs> do you like the four corners or do you like the random or do we need something up here now are we good do we need some like linen thread or something? We could do some of that or some of our, like our pebbled path. We could do a little bit of this. This is a little heavy in itself. <laughs> okay, we've got some random, some four corners. Okay, let's see what we think. This is how you split this up. It had this cord is kind of thick that comes with it. But I'm thinking, what if we did like some of this and we just unwrap this? And you don't really want to do it just the way I did it. I was trying to grab that bottom part. If you grab that, if you try to keep them. See where I'm pulling, pulling here and keeping that straight. I've got two on one side, one on one side, and I'm pulling the bottom too. Because if you let it all get tangled up, it sometimes really makes a mess and won't pull apart. But we're going to kind of pull those apart. Thank you all for sticking with me today. We had quite a bit to go over. Snake that through there. If it gets stuck, just kind of pull out your third leg there and pull them apart. Now, I have a royal mess on the desk. But let's see if we can. We barely stuck that. And we're going to cover it up anyway. Cover it back up. So what if we did a like a little nest of this? We can go ahead and put some seal there and just try it because all of that's going to be covered up. So, you know, it's worth a shot. Whoop. Didn't break it like I was supposed to. Let's see. Now we're going to put the end in there. That's kind of 
stick this up where some goes in and out and around and we're just playing let's just see how this will come out It has been windy here in Lubbock today. I don't know where all y'all are watching from, especially those watching the replay, but we have had a windy one here, which is not totally unusual for Lubbock, but it's kind of a weird time of year. We don't want five even little things, that's for sure. Be nice if we had five. Let's see. I can stick that up there and have it still show. Because you don't want it to go loop, 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 loop and be all even. Nope, it's got to come down more. Okay, let's see how this is. Yeah, I think... Rebecca, I, I thought I would like random too, but let's see what we think of this. I think if we do this, we need one more little loop somehow up here showing. We're just playing. Nope, it's not going to be long enough to show. They need to the loops kind of need to be uneven, I think. Maybe an odd number, and they need to be uneven as far as how big they are and where they are and that kind of thing. Let's see what we think about this on a little nest. I'm just going to lay it there. See, I think we need one more if we're going to do it. I don't think it needs to be a four a foursome. What do y'all think about that? If we added maybe a little bit more or brought this one up a little, do y'all like this idea or think I should just go back and see if I can get those dots off and put them back in the corners <laughs> like I had them? <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. May just have to break into... See if we can get the whole bottom like that. See if y'all are commenting. And I'm just putting little bits of sticky strip in there. I mean, the uh, stamp and seal. I'm liking it a little better now that it's uneven. Maybe we don't want this one. Let's just do the three and see. Okay, too much with the pattern back here and this, or let's see, would it help? Would it help if you were putting on the back of the circle instead of the base? Probably, Tanya. Probably would have been better to start with. So, Rebecca, not crazy about this. Okay. So, take this off and get rid of it all together. Or what do you think? Got my phone all crooked. Yeah, Tanya. <laughs> okay, you and Rebecca are out, so I'm out.
Off we go. Now we have a hairy, <laughs> hairy fuzzy card. <laughs> and desk. Ooh, let me get a sip of water. Okay, can you think of anything else to try? Do we need another layer? Or I think it's just the comparison of this to that that's making me not happy. But make sure all that gets covered up here. Thank you all for sharing your opinions. Do you think we need four besides those? Maybe. Go a little crazy with our embellishments on this one. We'd have to do four big or four small. I think the small would kind of get lost. But if you just kind of lay them on there and don't press them down hard, a lot of times you can get them right back up. So we would probably just want to do them evenly, kind of, you could measure it, you could make a little template, you could do whatever. But I think we can get them close by guessing. Too much. It's too much, isn't it? Maybe we need to, let's see if we can even get these off at this point. Yes. Maybe, but we show a little circle there. Huh. Probably need to leave that. I think that's too much with the four. Four and the three. And those, I really can't. I've had those on, I think, too long. So... Unless we did... Sorry, peeps. I don't even know how long I've been going here. We probably need to ooh, cut this off. Yep. That and one up there would just look too funky, too. Nope. I think we just do that and stick with it. <laughs> there are your two choices. What if you had just the ends of the twine sticking out on opposite corners? We could try that. Hello, Facebook user from Ohio. Glad to have you. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry, this is an abnormally long video, but we just were playing here and trying to figure out how we wanted this to work. Okay. Tanya, let's try this. Like just the two ends opposite each other. Just the ends of the twine sticking out on opposite corners. Is that what you mean, Tanya? Are all four corners? Or I think we just don't like the twine <laughs> on this particular instance. I don't think that worked either. Good, good suggestion, though. I think we should just leave it at this for this one. I think it wouldn't look so bare in the corners had we not seen the other sample first. And now I have Harry sticking out. 
But it's a pretty card, don't you think? Wink of Stella. Rebecca was going to let me. Okay, we're going to wink this. Hopefully y'all learned something new today and had fun with this. Little on the leaf, little on that, and kind of going in the, the stroke pattern that we talked about along with the lines and then I think a little here would be nice you might not want to bling it up this much if it's for a guy but I think it could work for any of those I think it could work male female naturalist botanist whatever you want to call it but I think that's really pretty hope y'all enjoyed it today Thank you so much for tuning in and hope y'all will share also on your social media platforms so that it helps me get the word out about how much I enjoy inspiring and sharing other sharing creativity with others. So thanks again for tuning in. And if you're in the Lubbock area, I'll be posting all the classes soon. Right now I have a techniques class scheduled for the 14th, Sunday the 14th, and then that following Monday, whatever that is, I don't have a Let's see, a calendar, 22nd, Monday the 22nd, I will be having a spotlight showcase class that's a spotlight on this suite, the Nature Sweetness Suite. <laughs> so we'll be using that in both the techniques class and this one. And I'll have some other opportunities coming up that I will post in on my, on my blog. Thank you. Thanks, Francis. I'm glad. Oh, let's see what Tanya said here. Oh, get her watercolor pencils. I know. it. it I just forget about them. But I thought they would be great on this particular set. So, thank you, Francie. Glad you liked it. Enjoyed having y'all with me today. We've got a lot of fun times ahead. Thanks again for tuning in. Y'all have a great rest of the weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>